Welcome to Work at Heights, few minutes of fall protection where we do our best to provide fall protection education on a topic or issue that you can use in your organization's training effort and fall protection program. Today's topic is fall protection and lifts, mobile elevated work platforms or MUPs, and which is better, lanyards or self-retracting devices. The fall hazard we are guarding against is ejection, not lift failure. All lifts have guardrails that provide a layer of fall protection, but boom type lifts can bounce and flex, creating an issue where the lift could stay up but the operator is ejected. In an ejection situation, guardrails are inadequate since the user can be bounced and ejected over top of them. OSHA and all state programs require fall protection in any type of lift where ejection is an issue. Vertical lifts, like scissors and personnel lifts, do not bounce, therefore guardrails are considered adequate and OSHA does not require additional fall protection. So for our lanyard and FRD comparison, we will assume a six foot, 310 pound person is inside a lift that has a 44 inch guardrail and an anchor at the 22 inch mid rail. We will also assume that the operator exits the basket right beside the anchor. We will compare an ANSI Z359.13 six foot FF energy absorbing lanyard to an ANSI Z359.14 Class 2 self-retracting device. We'll base our comparison around a resting force of the system and the clearances required. So if the user goes over the guardrail with a thick foot energy absorbing lanyard, there will be anywhere from a zero to an eight foot free fall, depending on how they exit the platform. If the ejection has them travel upward to the fullest length of the lanyard, the free fall on their way down could be as high as eight feet as the lanyard comes down to rest over the guardrail. Alternatively, if they roll and flop over the rail, they may not enter a full state of freefall and they just come to the end of the lanyard and stop. On the extreme end of this scenario, there are issues with a 310 pound person falling eight feet into a six foot FF lanyard and a 12 foot FF or a shorter lanyard should be used, but it's more likely that the free fall is gonna be less and it's probable that forces will be in the 900 pound range. There are no issues with using a 12 foot FF lanyard. The forces would just increase to the 1,350 pound range. With the lanyard, the total required clearance from the top of the guardrail will range between 12.2 and 16.2 feet, depending on how far the shock absorber deploys, which depends on the user weight and the free fall, which as you can see is somewhat unpredictable. This number includes the total fall distance, harness stretch, body length, and a factor of safety. So switching over to the self-retracting device, if the user goes over the guardrail with a class two SRD, the forces will be less than 1,350 pounds and the clearance from the top of the guardrail will be around 14 feet based upon manufacturer's testing and clearance charts supplied with the unit. There is a chance though, based upon speed of ejection, that the SRD locks before the operator is ejected and they remain in the basket. There's also a chance if they flop and roll over the guardrail that the locking speed isn't reached and they travel further until the unit locks or runs out of line. Also, there's a chance that the SRD ratchets, which is locking and unlocking a couple of times as the boom bounces. So there isn't a clear winner between lanyards and SRDs based upon force and clearance. Energy absorbing lanyards may have a slightly lower force on the user, but they will always go the length of the lanyard and whatever portion of the shock absorber deploys which is why some organizations use shorter or adjustable lanyards to limit the ejection distance. SRDs have a slightly higher force, but there's a chance the operator will stay in the basket if the SRD locks before the operator is ejected. SRDs are very user friendly as the retracting line stays away from your knees and legs while you work. Unfortunately though, there's also a chance the SRD locks and unlocks a few times as the lift bounces. Both lanyard and SRD options are acceptable for use and there is a wide variety of products to choose from. How the person exits the basket, where in the basket does ejection occur, how much does the person weigh, and the location of the lift anchor create too many variations with these numbers to say one system is better than the other based upon force and clearance. So how do you decide? It's recommended that organizations consider user preference, price, changes in training and availability when deciding which system to use. Lastly, it must be noted that both of these systems are fall arrest systems. Since the lengths of both systems allow the operator to travel past the edge of the fall hazard. The only restraint systems that can be used in lifts are traveling lanyards or short coupled systems in smaller lifts where the lengths of the connector do not allow the operator to go over the edge of the guardrail. 
These systems are preferred if the lift and work allows for their use.